investing. What are the yeah, really like the five sure. ways that investment properties make money for clients? Totally. It's a great yeah. question. Yeah. So there's, you know, everybody really thinks about one way to make money yeah. and that's on the, the cash flow, right? Okay. Every single month wanting to know how much money am I going to get when I buy an investment property? Yeah. Um, there's actually five ways and, okay. and that's one way for sure. It's cash flow. Cash flow. Okay. Yep. And that's, you actually need it to cash flow. Now it's, how much are you comfortable with it cash flowing? Do you need a lot because you're actually looking for monthly income or are you looking yeah. for, hey, I don't care about cash flow as much. I'm okay with less of that if I can get some other benefits. Sure. Right? Sure. And so so one is cash flow. Um, that's obvious. It's everything that you get after um, your rent comes in and all your expenses are taken away. Okay. Whatever's left over. Net that's income. your monthly cash flow. Yep. Net, net income. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. Right. Uh, the second way you can make money in investing mm -hmm. is... Um, on your mortgage pay down, right? So your principal balance on your loan yep. comes down over time and your uh, renter or your tenant, however you want to call, you know, call them, they're paying that down, right? Uh -huh. So um, that money's going to you in the long term as that principal balance goes down, right. um, that's going to come back to you eventually, Okay. right? So that's the second way. Okay. Uh, the third way is appreciation of the property itself. Mm. So that's been pretty sweet over the last couple of years, awesome. right? It's been awesome. It's been out of control. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Abnormal. Yep. I mean, don't you wish you would have had like 10 properties or more, you know, yeah. The last Hindsight 2020 years. for sure. hundred percent. No doubt yeah. about that. Yeah. When's the best time to buy an investment property? Right now, yeah. or like 20 years ago, right? Right, <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> In 2008, when everything crashed. Yes, um, that's very true. So appreciation, but normally most properties are going to appreciate anywhere from 3 to 5% every year, right? Mm -hmm. So not only is your principal balance going down, your appreciation is going up, and so that's going to give you more equity mm -hmm. um, over time, right? Mm -hmm. So there's three ways right there. Yep. Your fourth, so we've, got, we've got cash flow. We've got cash flow. You got uh, principal buy down yep. or pay down, yep. and then you got equity appreciation, uh, sorry, appreciation yep. 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 Uh, year over year, mm -hmm. right? So those things are all happening um, throughout the year. Yes. The next thing is when it comes to tax time, right? So there's mm, quick people, disclaimer. A lot, don't, a lot of people don't think about this. A lot of people tax don't think benefits, about this. which is huge. It's massive. Exactly. It's massive. More it's than actually, any, a lot of more than anything, really, right? Yes. Like when you're writing off. All the depreciation, your expenses, depreciation, expenses. just having a mortgage That's too, right. right? All of that. That's so right. yeah, I guess talk more about what that looks like. It, exactly. It's, it's actually something that there's a lot of things you can do there. And of course, I'm not a tax professional. <laughs> Brian's not a tax professional. Yeah, underneath here. Yeah, yeah contact your CPA. Contact right? there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we'll speak in general terms about yep. it, but you mentioned depreciation. So yep. um, real estate is, uh, if, if you go, most businesses, if you go buy something, you can depreciate your assets over time, right? Yep. Well, real estate's the one asset you can buy that you can depreciate, but it's also going to appreciate just like we talked about, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go buy a computer, that computer is not going to go up in value over time, yep. right? But uh, tax time, if I go buy that computer, I'm going to depreciate it. Right. If I go buy a house, I can depreciate it, get that tax benefit, and it's going to appreciate. Yeah. It's one of the so only good. things in the world that's so going to do that for you. So, so that's huge. You also get all your expenses, right? So maintenance, um, your property management fees, anything that's an expense, insurance, uh, all those things are going to play into that as well. And so you get to, you know, mileage. If you go visit your rental property, you get a buy out, you know, you get a, that's a tax write off. Yeah. If your rental property is in a different state and you take a trip out there to go do something for it. Expense um, plane ticket. an expense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. Right. So you have all those expenses you can write off. Um, there's also, uh, an, uh, a thing a lot of people don't know about, and it's called accelerated depreciation. In the first year, you buy it, hmm. um, and there's there's uh, certain things around it. You know, you have to make sure that you talk to a tax accountant. Yeah. You know, who knows yeah. what they're talking about. Um, but in the first year, if you buy an investment property, you can accelerate a lot of that depreciation and take a, a bigger benefit out of that and maybe get some income back mm. at tax time. So then you can use that to go buy another investment property. Your wizard, Harry. So, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> so, um, so that's four ways. We said there's five, right? Yep. So the fifth way is it's a hedge against inflation. Okay. Okay. What do you mean by hedge against inflation? That's great. Yeah. Talk to me. That's a nerdy term, right? Like, <laughs> right. what does that even mean? Because we're seeing inflation right now. That's so. right. Think about it. This is the best way to think about it, right? If I have my mortgage payment, I know this is not what most mortgage payments are right now. But let's say it's a thousand dollars mortgage payment sure. every month. Just for okay? the sake of simplicity here. For simplicity, yep. yeah, exactly. So I have a thousand dollars a month for thirty years. I'm paying a thousand dollars a month on that. Now, of course, we know taxes will go up, some of that sure. kind of stuff, but sure. the actual payment on the loan yep. stays the same for that 30 years, right? right? 
So the value of the dollar, as the dollar gets weaker with inflation, right. I don't now have to pay more be- on that house for mm-hmm. my mortgage payment. Right. So I'm actually getting more value out of my dollar. Right. And paying the same amount, even though if I were to buy it 10 years from now, it costs me a lot more. Right. And that ties into your cash flow analysis. That's right. Right. Because a lot of investors are maybe even comfortable with a little bit of an even or even negative cash flow for year one. For sure. Right. Yep. Rates are There's high. A stabilization, stabilization period that can happen there. Exactly. Yep. Right. Depends on what market you're in right now. But Denver right. market, we're in a pretty hot market. You know, we're not getting houses for for very cheap. And nope. so unless you've got a big down payment, right, you may be in that 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 category. That's but right. if you look at this like a long term investment, as you most likely will you can see what the general trend is going to be. I mean, shoot, last year, this time last year, rent was increasing 18% year over year. That's right. You know, we're probably going to see closer to like home price appreciation, three to 5%, Uh you know, but if you can, you know, expect that over time too, you're only going to see your wealth grow. 100%. In 10 or 20 years. Yeah, we're talking about long-term holds here. We're not talking about in a year or anything like that. This is over time. We're looking at the big picture of what investment properties do for you. And these things compound, like you said, rents will increase yep. over time. Property, you know, um, values increase. That principal balance gets paid down. Um, and here's the other thing that I think a lot of people don't think about. Um, they think about, well, I'm going to have to pay for all those expenses out of pocket, right? Well, if you do it right and you're cash flowing and you have a good reserve balance, right, it's a part of that. Mm-hmm. You're not paying for anything, and and that's the thing. You need to really have like, someone who can analyze these properties well with you. So that, you know, if, if I have a $5,000 reserve account and my water heater goes out and I have to pay $2,000, yeah, it comes out of that reserve account. And then the rent, that cash flow builds that reserve account back up, right? Yep. It's, it's something to think about. Like, you're not really paying for all of that. Yes, you are, you know, sure. um, because you get the income from the rent. Yeah. But the thing is, ultimately, your your tenants and the rent that's coming in is what's paying for all of that. Right. Right. It, I mean, it's it's treating it like a business, right? 100%. Making sure you're covering the whatever the 10%, we'll call it in expenses. That's right. And um, yep. you showed me a pretty awesome sheet a couple weeks incredible ago. Incredible spreadsheet. That incredible spreadsheet that yeah. Brian has that I can tell you right now is... Very, very unique to him specifically. Even investment specific agents, I don't think have access to this kind of stuff. So really cool. Exactly.